Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the next lecture of quantum transport course. Today, we will have yet another change of topic. We will talk about quantum dots, about interference in quantum dots. The relation between uh, previous lecture is uh, interference right what we've been looking uh, at a week ago was uh, interference quantum interference which caused some uh, corrections quantum corrections to uh, conductance to magnetic conductance um, same interference, if it becomes stronger, leads to localization. Again, let's recall two barriers. Interference between these two barriers, particle which goes back and forth, would lead to a localized state. So we will be talking about localized states in quantum dots. Uh, the most important property are discrete levels. So we've been, we will look at simple systems of discrete levels in the box, in the ring, very simple models of quantum dots. Uh, we will understand what are magnetic properties of these dots, how one can induce Currents by applying magnetic field. We will talk more about the levels and the states. There's a difference. And uh, right for a while, we've been talking about transport in quantum dots. Um, which is uh, strongly influenced by Coulomb blockade. So, in fact, it will be kind of a repetition of Coulomb blockade lecture, but in these circumstances, when discrete levels are present. Good. Then we will um, look in more detail and in more mathematical detail into levels in quantum dots, how they are arranged. Um, in fact, uh, it will be very different from simple models which we have started with. Uh, realistic quantum dots are chaotic levels in this system. They obey the laws of uh, random matrices so we will revisit again the theory of random matrices, already applying it to quantum dots immediately. Very good. That was my outline. Um, let us see what do we have next. Um, let us define what uh, quantum dot is. Right, there's a definition. It is a place, whatever um, construction device, where particles, most likely electrons, holes, I can find invisibly discrete levels. So what is important in this definition is visibility. In principle, any uh, metallic object being isolated uh, develops discrete levels. So for instance, if one isolates a field tower from the ground, you got a system where electrons are confined in discrete levels, but it's not quantum dot. 
what is the problem? The problem is that the spacing between uh, electron levels in Eiffel Tower, in uh, mic and even in a micrometer size metallic island is too small to resolve. So they do not qualify for quantum dot unless uh, at least in this century. Uh, all right, so for visible levels, one needs a reasonably big level separation, like 0 0.1 mill electron volts, uh, which means that the actual quantum dots are small. Well, if you work with metals, if you work with metallic elements, a uh, quantum dot would contain perhaps like 50 atoms, not more. Um, fortunately, we have superconductors, we have uh, two dimensional structures, and um, their wavelength is big. It's uh, almost micrometer size. So, interference discrete levels can be easily arranged in uh, semiconductor structures. Um, quantum dots are usually separated by observation method. We will mostly talk in about uh, uh, transferred quantum dots. In this case, the discreteness of the levels is uh, resolved by means of uh, transport experiment. Well, in order to arrange the transport, you need to connect the dots somehow to the legs. Right, let me try to zoom at this figure. Uh, my mouse is lost. Uh, let me try still to zoom in that figure. So here, in fact, we have quantum dot uh, uh, and even two. We don't see them, let me visualize it. So first of all, what is there is a top of a substrate and there are two-dimensional electron gas in this, uh, in this substrate. We put this metallic electrodes on the top. Oops, no. This is one. And with this metallic electrodes, we repel uh, electron gas uh, forming a structure. Uh, good, so quantum dots are eventually here. And uh, there are also leads connected to these dots just like this and like this. So what I cover with green are electrons, conducting electrons. So here is an example of a realization of a transport quantum dots. Uh, in optics, you detect the discreteness of levels by means of an optical measurement. You um, send some light or microwave radiation and uh, look at which uh, spectral um, frequency you have absorption 
uh, or perhaps uh, emission after excitation of these uh, dots. So these dots don't have to be connected. Uh, let's see, how can I show it? Uh, right. So there are examples. It's also a semiconductor, but uh, grown a bit uh, difficult, uh, di different. Uh, you don't see contacts, and there's none. And the dot is somewhere inside this uh, this uh, fine structure. Right. Uh, what was initial uh, catch about quantum dots? How did they become uh, popular? How people become to make them in different ways? Um, the initial um, idea was to make uh, a kind of uh, artificial material from artificial atoms. So the idea was like this. Need some empty space. Uh, the idea was like this. Uh, let's uh, make a substrate. And let us make many, many, many quantum dots in this substrate. And each with respect to spectral properties has a very well defined level. Then we make a, a, a each dot is an atom, we apply them together, we make a material, and that has very uh, well-defined uh, absorption, li uh, absorption line, or if you excite emission line. So one can use it, for instance, in lasers, in all kinds of nonlinear optics, uh, instead of uh, natural atoms, uh, which are used for lasing, one could use, for instance, quantum dots. That never worked. And perhaps it is a challenging question, but still I would dare to ask it. Can somebody explain why it doesn't work in this way? Why we don't have, to be more precise, narrow spectral line if we put zillions of identical quantum dots into this substrate. So, I don't see anything in chat window. Please. It is a very simple idea, also very much repeated in the course of this course of quantum transport. Yes, very good. The answer is, it is not possible to fabricate these dots in the same fashion such that, that they have the same uh, line. It's not like it's atoms, atoms are always the same, but artificial atoms, which consist of many atoms, which contain defects, which are affected by uh, uh, fluctuations of uh, electrostatic potential, uh, they have some dispersion of the wavelength of the resonant line. And in fact, if you have very many dots stuck together, you see some very dull absorption or emission spectrum. Good. 
people know how to circumvent this. Uh, it's uh, also rather straightforward way. Instead of exciting many, many dots, they manage to excite one or two or three. One could see discrete levels, but it is rather far from applications. One cannot do much with a single quantum dot. Um, very good. So let us. Back, get back to normal size. Uh, there are also some important things which uh, are left this transparency. Uh, right. I um, need to discuss, uh, and that is, uh, I would do it already here, a criterion um for transport dot to have discrete levels this is not trivial because you connect this you connect it to the uh, continuous spectrum in the leads and uh, so there will be some uh, rate of jumping from the dot to the leads we will talk about this and uh, this rate would uh, broaden the discrete levels. And if the broadening is of the order of distance between the levels you are done, you, you don't see any discrete levels. So it does not qualify as a quantum dot. Um, good, what does it mean? It has a very simple expression in terms of resistance uh, or conductance. The conductance of a contact must be smaller than GQ. Uh, however, people tend to misuse uh, the language a bit, and uh, they sometimes call quantum dots, chaotic quantum dots, even uh, oops, structures like this, when we, we just have some, uh, well, I would say cavity, I would call it chaotic cavity, whatever they call it, dots, and the conductance uh, of these uh, contacts is bigger than GQ. Uh, therefore, it, for me, it doesn't qualify as quantum dots. There are no discrete levels in there. Isolation is not good enough. Fine. We talked a bit about quantum dots, about um, practical applications about ways to make them. Uh, let me get a bit theoretical, but at very simple level, at the level of your first quantum course. And let me understand discrete levels in a two-dimensional box. Uh, let's see, so that's how it would uh, look like. We, well, with some guess, not very important. We um, um, built up the potential such that that uh, electrostatic potential is very large uh, in the gray area and the uh, constant in Y area. And that has uh, a shape of the box. So here X, uh, Y coordinates. Uh, let us uh, find uh, discrete levels in there. And that's a problem which is uh, simple, which we have already looked at in the very beginning of our course. This is quantization in terms of standing waves. Right. So, uh, the, uh, there are wave functions which uh, have nodes. Um, at, the, uh, at the boundaries of this, of this region, and uh, one can just 
get discrete levels from discretization of i. So there's kinetic energy. Wave vector is quantized. And that's what we got. We've got a system of discrete levels labeled with two numbers, n x and n y. Um, let me plot these levels. Uh, right, let me arrange it in series. So uh, I fix uh, n i and uh, plots energies at different nx. And within each series, uh, I see increasing distance between the levels. But if I uh, kind of take all series together, the distance between the levels will be approximately constant, all right? So uh, that will uh, bring us to the estimation that works in two dimensions, in three dimensions, one dimension so it will be different. But in two dimensions, the level spacing in the dot is just inversely proportional to the area <coughs> number. Uh, and the proportionality coefficient is uh, two-dimensional density of states. Uh, right, electron mass enters here, and uh, the blessing of uh, semiconductor structures are very small masses, which increase level spacing at given area uh, pretty much. So this is a, a concrete number for gallium arsenide heterostructures. Good. So we understood the system of the levels. It's again standing uh, waves, uh, like we had in a um, uh, waveguide. But now we don't have a transport direction, it's all confined. Uh, let me consider another simplistic model, which will have some interesting parameter equality. Let me consider discrete levels in the ring. Uh, so whatever the method, now I make this area of uh, low potential uh, in a ring shape. So electrons can only propagate in a narrow channel over here. And in fact, they're one dimensional. So to compute the levels in the dot, I can consider one dimensional problem. And uh, in order to make it interesting, I also apply magnetic field. So that's how kinetic energy in the presence of magnetic field looks like. So the refractor potential. Uh, good, there might do some convenient mathematical transformation. I introduce a coordinate of an electron in terms of the angle. So let it be the angle uh, phi. Right. So the momentum, which is um, derivative of the coordinates, is written as the derivative of phi. And uh, magnetic field is uh, perpendicular to the plane of the slide. Vector potential 
uh, is in fact always in a tangential direction, um, can be chosen in tangential direction. Uh, so it just uh, constant. So with this, I can rewrite this Hamiltonian tangent form. Here, pi is a total flux which goes through the area encircled by this electron. Uh, fine. Then one can easily find levels in this Hamiltonian. Uh, it's not a standing wave, but it is discretization in um, a period with periodic boundary conditions. Wave functions of this Hamiltonian have the following form. N is a discrete number. Good. So I take this form, I substitute it to Hamiltonian. What do I have? I have a series of levels labeled by N. And this, the energy of these levels can be shifted by flux. If you remember the lecture about Coulomb blockade, it was kind of the same picture we looked at. But the difference was that for Coulomb blockade, different discrete states, they corresponded to different charges. Uh, here at horizontal axis was um, induced torch was gate voltage. Now we have magnetic field at this axis, and different and uh, are discrete level uh, discrete uh, numbers. Uh, in fact, it's uh, if you recall a bit. Um, atomic physics, one can associate these numbers with angular momentum. Angular momentum um, in the direction perpendicular to the to the slide. Um, and the quantization of angular momentum gives rise to the system of this uh, of these um, parabolas. Good, what I can see here, I see periodic dependence of the levels versus flux, right? This is the lowest level, the second level, top level. Uh, I gave them in different colors. Good, so in the single from box, we have a kind of a parameter to play, we can affect the levels in quantum dot by applying magnetic field. Again, it's a case of a Roman bomb effect of uh, interference affected by magnetic field. So let's see what one can do about this. Um, It is uh, a little bit uh, too much of a name, persistent currents. But people like a bit exaggerated names. That's how they hold the effect which they wanted to observe in quantum dots. Um, with uh, applied magnetic fields, well, we can see from this picture one can make a certain angular momentum for electron in the dot. One can change it with magnetic field, uh, right? So it's like a circulating current. It's not a transport current. One could not put it into the circuit. One cannot uh, uh, use it. Uh, uh, as in a battery, uh, but it is 
still down and circulating current. They call it the system current. And uh, how to define such current in general, right? Um, it's a property of the ground state. And um, one can find this current from magnetization. And magnetization uh, would be derivative of the energy with respect to flux. Total energy of the system. So let's uh, forget about interactions a moment. Uh, without interactions, that will be energy of all field levels. Good. So I uh, want to explain how this uh, depends on number of levels which you use. It's a bit tricky dependence. Uh, first of all, very naive thinking would be, well, if I have more levels in the dot, I will have larger effect. It does not, sir. Let me uh, get back to this picture of parabolas and uh, let me um, concentrate on a given value of flux and look at the derivative. So here the derivative is negative, but the second level would give you positive derivative, which would largely cancel the effect. Uh, if I would get third electron, I would have uh, uh, negative derivative, all right, sir. So, uh, it will um, get back again, but uh, yeah, the uh, it doesn't grow as a number of electrons. Uh, here I sketched uh, what I see for one, two, three electrons are given in uh, different colors, these lines. Uh, right, so uh, in fact, um, how can I put a different way? The, these derivatives, they alternate for neighboring levels and uh, tend to compensate each other. So I could say that in a many uh, level, quantum dot, the effect is small. It's been produced by the last uh, level, uh, which we fail. All right, that's what, what, can, uh, what one can see in this picture. There is, uh, there is um, note which is rather obvious. All this effect is periodic in flux, right? By construction, our geometry is such that uh, interference pattern is periodic in flux. Uh, Fine. So people did make quite some and e quite some effort to see this persistent parts, but how to say that it's not transfer experiment. One cannot connect leads. So what they see, they again made many dots are not precisely identical, but well, they did a good uh, effort. And uh, they look at magnetization signal, apply magnetic field, look at uh, magnetization. Uh, right, um, it has lots of signals from the substrate, from metallic parts in your fridge. Um, but there is an effect which is uh, periodic in magnetic field. 
and the drive one can uh, separate this signal and the background of all other signals and can measure persistent currents in quantum dots. Uh, all right. Let me talk in more details about levels and states in quantum dots. Why would I uh, make a difference? So a level is a place for electron or hole to, to be. The, a, a level can be filled or empty. And the actual state, quantum mechanical state, is determined by filling of uh, of every of every level. Good. Uh, let me arrange some simple states. Let me take a dot with well. I would start with six six levels, and let me put six electrons into the dot. The levels are spin degenerate, so in the current state, all electrons would come to three lowest levels. These levels will be failed, and I, for further discussion, it is convenient to keep it filled, and all excitations in these levels, I would call holes. Right, so this is ground state, Excitation is, uh, how can I make excitation? Well, I can just grab this electron and put it here. That would be the uh, lowest energy excitation of the system. And that I do like this. So there's an electron and there's a hole which remains because I've, uh, I removed one electron from this level. Fine, this is the uh, simplest excited state. I don't uh, talk about spin at the moment, but, but one can one can uh, one can extract electrons with any spin. Uh, it, this is simple. Good. Now I wanted to discuss very simple, but also very important thing also for practical observations in quantum dots. Let me understand uh, how many states will I have in a certain energy strip. Number of levels in the strip is like this. It can be large, so for instance, for the situation which I illustrate in the figure, it is like uh, uh, 24 levels. I put it a bit different color, levels for electrons and uh, all excitations. Um, good, then uh, let me look at all possible states. Um, if I just remove one electron and put it to uh, the level, I have the, the states of uh, first generation. Uh, one electron hole pair. But well, I can easily arrange uh, more complex states by having two electron hole pairs. And third generation, and so on. And uh, it is uh, sure that, uh, of course, the states of um, 
uh, high generations, they have lowest minimal energy. So they, uh, uh, they certain generation would start at certain big energy. But uh, the number of states grows very fast with the generation number. Okay, that's uh, what uh, that's what I um, uh, tried to illustrate here with this plot. So here, black are energies of the states of the first generation. Uh, we have already some red will be second generation and one sees much denser levels although it starts at higher energy right and uh, there states of uh, third generation it is very dense, uh, but by chance I put it um, after uh, the uh, second generation, but it's very dense. It, one cannot really resolve uh, the levels at, at, at this, um, uh, uh, for this generation. Good. It all sums up to an interesting exponential formula which shows the number of states in a given energy interval. So it's exponential, but not exponential of energy, it's exponential of uh, basically square root of number of levels with some condition. We have many states, it means that uh, the level spacing becomes increasingly small. It becomes small. It is difficult and uh, finally impossible to resolve this. So it is a bit interesting fact, which is seen, uh, readily seen in experiment. Um, a quantum dot is a quantum dot. The levels are visible only at sufficiently low energies. Only suff sufficiently low energy uh, uh, space, not exceeding several level space things, something like that. Otherwise, the number of levels would grow exponentially small and uh, the, uh, sorry, the number of states will go exponentially small and the spacing between the states cannot be resolved. Right, so that was about uh, levels and the states. So I'm doing the respective time or it's almost time for the break uh, let me just uh, spend another minute to talk uh, about interactions so so far uh, we didn't have any interaction um, uh, suppose we do have interaction, uh, say, electron repulsion between the electrons in the dot. It does um, interesting things, which are interesting for us, insulated, not very important. Uh, for instance, if we have this first excited state, uh, one can arrange this in four different fashions corresponding to two directions of uh, spin. And uh, these states can be sorted into three states of triplet with spin one and singlet with spin zero. And there is no interaction, there is no energy difference between states. Interaction will actually split these states. 
uh, besides interaction will uh, mix up the states uh, with the same spin and different generations well the first interaction can just produce electron hole pairs elect a number of electron hole pairs is not conserved in this case uh, spin orbit interaction so it might speed the states of high spin but all these interesting facts about interactions are somehow isolated not very important there is the most important interaction which i will discuss after the break so let's have uh, a break till um, uh, eight for prefer shorter breaks let's write about this to the chart Looks like nobody, everybody is satisfied with the break. So let me go on. Let me continue my story. So that were small, interesting, uh, well, interesting, important things about interaction, but relatively small, isolated. What is the most important manifestation? of interaction is something which we already know. This is charging energy. This is Coulomb blockade. So let us um, recall uh, the story about Coulomb blockade, let us apply it to dot. So, if you can find some uh, electrons in front of dot, it will get charged. This charge will cause charging energy. And uh, this is quadratic dependence on charge. Uh, how to change? the number of electrons in quantum dot like in Coulomb Island one has to add two elements first element is a reservoir of electrons uh, where electrons can um, uh, come to or come from uh, so there's ability to change this and second one needs to uh, have a guide electron, which would try to shift the potential of quantum dot with respect to the metal. Right, so it will uh, invite electrons in quantum dot. Um, the, it will induce a charge, induce charge. And uh, right, so the actual charge in the dot is discrete. Um, the minimum this energy can never be achieved. Uh, right, uh, rather, we have stepwise change of a charge. Right, what is uh, important to notice this when we start talking about globe blockade we made an estimation for metallic element uh, the estimation was uh, about relative scales of Coulomb blockade energy charging energy and level spacing and in metals uh, charging energy is uh, always much bigger than the level space. Uh, it turns out that in quantum dots, the situation is less severe, but in fact, it's uh, rather the same. So charging energy is always bigger, by factor bigger than the level um, 
uh, spacing. Right, what was N again? So here, at this, uh, at this slide, N is a total number of electrons in the dot. Right, uh, this uh, red curve is almost invisible. Uh, so, at some gate voltage setting, there were no electrons in the dot. Then, well, I put some, and that goes to step like fashion, like this. I believe this uh, answer your question. Uh, N is uh, number of electrons in the dot. Uh, right. Uh, capacitances between uh, quantum dot and metal, between quantum gap again, actually slightly depend on um, on uh, number of charges. Because you, when you have kind of put more charges in the dot, it also tends to, well, it does become bigger. Uh, bigger size means uh, bigger capacitance. But usually one can uh, neglect this effect. Uh, right, and the dot can be emptied in distinction from metal island, which is impossible to empty uh, by any physical means. Uh, there are too many electrons in the dot, there are few. It can be emptied. Uh, right, otherwise it's a simple blockade, Coulomb blockade physics. What's important to understand is that uh, interaction is simultaneously uh, big and important and weak and unimportant, right? Uh, it is big and important when we try to change N. Uh, but if you just consider a quantum dot at fixed number of charges, charging energy doesn't change and the interaction effect is small. It's due to other interactions and uh, yeah, that uh, I have already discussed. Good, Coulomb blockade. It is very important if we really want to change the number of electrons in the dot, if we really want to organize a transport through a quantum dot. Uh, let me first uh, um, give you some general description of transport, um, which is a little bit of a reminder what we discussed um, in the course of metallic devices, uh, and also with some um, specifics of quantum dots. Right. Sure, I think electron transport through quantum dot can be generally described by master equation. So we have probabilities for a dot to be in a certain state. We have transition rates. With this, we can uh, make up a master equation, balance equation for probabilities. Solve it, get stationary distribution of. Uh, these probabilities. However, in distinction from metal island, one uh, cannot disregard the internal uh, structure in the dot, the internal excitations in the dot. So the states are labeled differently. Uh, it's not only number of electrons which characterizes the state, there is some internal structure. So it's the same uh, number of electrons that what can be in ground state, in the first excited state, second excited state, excited state of second generation, and so on. So in principle, uh, one needs to know probabilities uh, for all states. Good. Uh, these probabilities determined by the balance of uh, rates. 
Right, single electron transfer. Electrons go one by one, so N is uh, changed by plus minus one only. Uh, the internal state can change uh, quite a bit. Uh, let me perhaps give an example of uh, what I've uh, drawn. So there were field levels, there were um, uh, empty levels for electrons. So this is certain N, now an electron comes to here. If it sits on this level, that will be ground state. But it can go to any other level and then we get excited state. Uh, good. Uh, besides, since we have this internal degree of freedom, the relaxation in the dot can become important. Well, for instance, the same electron can uh, lose energy and go to the slower state, uh, which also has to be taken into account. Uh, right, because the rates eventually depend on a, or, or, or a single electron uh, rates eventually depend on this internal state. Good, it can be easily be, uh, become very uh, complex due to many states, which one should we would take into account. But again, the dot is quantum dot only if the few states in energy strip. Few states in energy strip means that in a concrete transport setup, we can just leave this one to uh, perhaps for uh, numerical collaborations with three states for each um, uh, charge configuration. So it's all doable. Right, let me um, talk a little bit about processes of relaxation in the dot. Mostly energy is uh, lost, not gained. Uh, so this R starts for relaxation. Oh, do I miss something? Oh yeah, relaxation rate. Let me discuss this in, in this order. Um, uh, in any case, one needs to dispose energy somehow um, accumulated in excited um, uh, state of the dot. So we have an excited state, one has to go to the ground state, one has to emit something. Right? That can be uh, fortune, electromagnetic excitation. That can be phonon excitation um, of the um, uh, crystal lattice where the dot is, is formed. Um, or it can be, for instance, interesting enough excitations um, in the leads. Well, for instance, if I have a dot in excited state, Next to it, I have a lead with a, a you know, continuous spectrum here and here for field and the empty states. Uh, right, so what can I um, do? What can happen? This energy can be disposed uh, into this lead, creating an electron hole pair. And it might look like uh, this electron hole pair just has tunneled in normal metal lead. There's, there's nothing like tunneling. There's nothing like tunneling. 
because no charge, no particle has been transferred anyhow. So it can happen even there's no um, a tunnel, if uh, the tunnel barrier between lead and the dot is, uh, is right? So this is just an exchange of uh, energy. Good, what I wanted to say is that there is a variety of different mechanisms. So this relaxation rates are difficult to predict and depending on dot and concrete configurations, they can vary by many orders of uh, magnitude. Uh, let me talk about something which is more stable and perhaps more important. Let me talk about single electron tunneling rate. Uh, all right. Here I wouldn't work the same energy consideration as we discussed in the course of Coulomb blockade. Uh, right, so the, there is a transition between n and n plus minus one, and the first one needs to look, one needs to look at the energy difference between two states. And most important ingredient is, of course, uh, Coulomb energy. Um, as to the rate itself, in contrast to, to what we have seen uh, in uh, metallic adland, the rate in uh, from a state in a quantum dot hardly depends on energy if energy difference allows it to happen. So like at zero temperature, it will be only at negative um, energy differences and with energy independent rate. Huh? How does this... Uh, and what is the difference between quantum dots and uh, Coulomb blockade uh, island? Uh, there is no difference one can say. Um, it all uh, it is uh, the same picture, a uh, very simple one. Let me outline it. Also, we have very useful estimation coming from this picture. Uh, let me relate this uh, rate and uh, conductance. So I um, consider quantum dots and I put metal lead inside and I rise the bit chemical potential of the lead with respect to uh, that one of the dot. So electron can, can tunnel to the dot, come to the discrete level, and that happens with the rate gamma. Um, let me now rise the voltage. In this case, uh, there will be N levels, much more levels available for tunneling. Uh, what are purple, green, and gray blocks? Uh, yes, it's uh, kind of consistent for all transparencies about quantum dots. Uh, purple are empty states. You can put an electron to this state. Green are states filled with electrons. So one can extract electrons from the state or one can create a hole, one can say so. As to green stuff, it just symbolizes a tunnel barrier, a spacer between normal metal lead and quantum dot. Uh, all right, does this answer your question? Good. 
uh, them. Uh, let me understand now that this number of uh, levels is proportional to voltage, which one applies to quantum dots. So we have current proportional to voltage, which means that we have conductance. Right. So we can uh, relate it to conductance of the barrier. This gives us the answer, the estimation for this rate. Rate gamma is the conductance of the of the barrier in the dimensions unit times level spacing in the door. Uh, let me explain uh, one important estimation, which uh, I believe I did, but perhaps I did it too briefly. It is uh, important constructive estimation. One can rewrite the, the, this formula as uh, follows. Let me put a uh, kind of proportionality sign. Um, good. So, gamma is the rate and it describes broadening of discrete levels. Delta is uh, the spacing between discrete levels. G is the conductance of a uh, connector between quantum dot and uh, normal lead. Good. So if G is uh, smaller than GQ, GQ, the broadening of each level Oops, I did something wrong with Zoom. The broadening of each level is uh, smaller than the separation. If one increases conductance, the levels got broader. They overlap, you don't see them. So the effect of discrete levels is gone. That's what we discussed in several lectures. Generally, it is escape rates, level spacing, and it is related to conductance. Uh, fine, that was about uh, single electron tunnel rates. So we have the rates, we have all ingredients to describe uh, the transport. Our most important generic and simplest situation is a situation which is called resonant permanent. As uh, many terms coming in my course and in physics in general, uh, exact um, meaning, exact origin of this term is uh, somehow difficult to explain. It is um, more difficult to explain than phenomenon itself. So let me uh, not, uh, 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 I, I don't want to explain why this particular tunneling setup is called just. Let me just define it. It is a situation of small voltage uh, between uh, two leads connected to the dot, and uh, it is arranged in such a way that in the energy strip available for tunneling, there is only one energy level. All right, what will happen then if it's arranged like this? 
uh, electrons come to this level from the left plate, go to the uh, to the right plate. That happens with the rates gamma L, gamma R. One can compute probability for this level to be filled. One can compute the current throughout the structure. In this case, we assume that the levels uh, have been spin split. It is important. Uh, in this case, you can forget about uh, interaction, right? Uh, why is it, sir? Because we have either zero electron, uh, no interaction, or one electron, in electron ca cannot interact with uh, itself. Uh, sir, once we arrange the situation of resonant tunnel, we can forget about this. Good, let us uh, see uh, what will uh, be the current if I plot it versus bias voltage and gate voltage. Sir, the levels are shifted uh, with gate voltage at uh, this point, they are aligned with chemical potential of both both leads. Good. Uh, right. So if uh, the level is in the window, it will be in this cone. And there we will have current. And if voltages do not depend on energy differences, this current will not depend on uh, voltages here. Roughly. And there will be no current if the level gets out of the window. So what is uh, an interesting feature here? This is a sharp current step. Uh, the voltage on y-axis is the transport voltage, so this particular. So one can shift with gate voltage the system of the levels, one way to align, and also one can increase uh, the um, energy strip available for tunneling. Uh, so there will be a plane of two voltages. So current step is sharp. And uh, one has to think about this because eventually sharp current step uh, means uh, big conductance, right? The conductance is the derivative of current with respect to voltage. So there must be something which uh, makes this conductance finite. There must be something which smooths sharp steps. Well, it can be smoothed by uh, temperature. Just a uh, feeling factor in uh, the lead is not step-like function, as we remember. Uh, with temperature, it can be smoothed. That would smooth the step. Uh, the width of the step will be on the order of temperature. So, in this case, maximum conductance would be derivative, would be the current divided by this width in voltage. Uh, good, that will be conductance, which eventually will grow if temperature get, gets, uh, gets smaller, right? So we have again the problem, but now the problem is at zero temperature. Uh, good. This problem is lifted if one understands that the um, uh, sharp uh, step in the current is due to discrete level at this position. And if the level is broadened, and it's broadened with gamma, 
uh, uh, the step also becomes smooth. So how to estimate the broadening? We have already done this. It's just this uh, rate, gamma. So for maximum conductance obtained, we actually get conductance quantity. Conductance quantity again. So what do we have? We have quantum dot with a very small um, uh, tunneling uh, with a tunneling con contacts of very small conductances. Unexpectedly, we have very high conductance differential conductance at least. And now I can uh, perhaps uh, change more word and finally explain the uh, resonant tunneling. In fact, we have already seen once such a possibility. It wasn't quantum dot, it was transmission resonance, if you remember. Double junction with small conductances, uh, but uh, if one takes into phase factor between these uh, junctions, uh, transmission coefficient doesn't have to be small. It can also peak at high values, or at the values of the quantum conductance. Uh, who still remembers this picture of transmission resonances? Uh, it uh, right, so perhaps it's time to look uh, at old lectures. It was uh, in the lecture number two, interference. It was also repeated a bit in the beginning of a lecture number three, when we had the double junction paradox. Fine, um, that was for spin split level. And in fact, for spin split level, I can uh, build up very simple and interacting theory for quantum dot. Uh, if one considers a spin degenerate level, that becomes a very complex problem. But qualitatively, the answer to this complex problem remains the same. Uh, step is smoothed by uh, broadening. And as a result, some modified only quantitative. Good, that was about uh, transport and quantum dots. Let me get uh, a little bit to the direction of uh, the homework. There is a nice homework about transport and quantum dots. Um, let me understand what will happen if we add more excited states. Uh, in addition to this resonant level. It means that we just look at the same uh, cone where transport can occur. So here in this region, we have um, only resonant tunneling. Increasing voltage, one can achieve um, tunneling to higher levels. For instance, here and here and here and here, all these different levels, um, all these different lines correspond to current jumps. And current jump, current jump will happen when yet another state is available for tunneling. Here it took a simple example with only two. Uh, excited state uh, with only two states for each configuration. Um, uh, configurations with different charge. So anyway, it, when we go with this gate voltage, we change number of electrons uh, by one. So also ground states. And for each configuration, I have two states, A and, A and B. Uh, extra states, excited states, and already with these two states, I've uh, got kind of a plenty of different regions, different domains. 
Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, an interesting homework problem, which is, has been analyzed, uh, and uh, I would uh, would um, appeal to you to attempt this homework. Uh, right about the states, about transport and quantum dot. Let me summarize this part by showing. Uh, experimental picture. Uh, quantum dots, as um, uh, almost every uh, phenomenon uh, uh, of uh, tra quantum transport, um, is material uh, independent phenomena. Well, one could uh, see uh, quantum dots in semiconductor structures, but this particular uh, dot has been made in a very thin carbon nanotube, which has been put between two electrons and affected by gate voltage. Despite this, uh, well, this physics of uh, level since the dot is universal, so one can what one can see here. First are diamonds, Coulomb blockade diamonds, which we know from from uh, lecture number five. Right. All right, so blue uh, uh, kind of light regions, regions with no current, current is blocked. Uh, and if we zoom in a bit, I don't have this menu anymore. Interesting. It looks like that I temporarily cannot zoom. Uh, anyway, what is to notice are these lines. So each line like this is a manifestation of a discrete level in the dot. One can see how these levels change from one electron configuration to another one. One can see levels on the, this direction corresponded to the main picture which I showed. What is also interesting to see if the voltage just several times level spacing, one sees more and more lines coming together. So in fact, uh, the spectrum becomes quasi continuous. That's what I said. There are levels, there are states, and uh, at sufficiently big energies, the spectrum in a quantum dot is not distributed. Good. That was about quantum dots, about transport in quantum dots. And in the remaining uh, minutes, uh, we will uh, talk more about the positions of the levels inside quantum dots. So you will forget about the states, we'll just concentrate on the levels, on the distribution and correlation. Sir, change of topic. Uh, right. Um, and it's a very different topic. And in fact, I will start with classical physics. Let me understand that in both dot geometries I have considered so far, in box geometry and in the ring geometry, Although it's not a ring, it's a circle, but it has the same. Um, how would you? The electron trajectories are very much ordered. Huh? So it, 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 in a box, it can only go like this periodic trajectory, repeating trajectory, very simple one, reflection from the, from the walls. In a circle, it can go uh, a little bit uh, more complex. So uh, eventually, what is circle here is green, and um, uh, purple or pink, uh, whatever we feel for, is a, an electron trajectory. 
Uh, you see, it's still repeating itself. It's very ordered. There are places where this trajectory never comes. Okay. And there is an important piece of information which comes from mathematics, which has uh, direct physical manifestations, that it is not a generic case. Even small distortion of these ideal geometries, which are called separable geometries. Separable because uh, the direction, uh, the motion into directions uh, can be separated. Uh, right, so it is a uh, generic situation is a situation of chaos. Uh, right, so in order to do, uh, to uh, have a model for this, mathematicians have invented uh, a billiard. Something you can play snooker with, a billiard. Billiard, well, it's very much like a circle geometry. The only point, well, you keep it pretty much regular. You just add, you know, this uh, piece between half circles. And that makes electron motion very different. It makes it completely chaotic. Uh, so there is a trajectory uh, absolutely disordered. And uh, it's important for me that it sweeps all phase space. Chaos. Right. I don't know to which extent uh, you have heard before about chaos, if somebody explained to you about chaos um, uh, in any of your courses. This is a popular topic and students uh, used to be a little bit chaotic. Uh, so perhaps you know about this before, if not, this is a short introduction to chaos. Somebody recalls these considerations, difference between regular and chaotic motion. I uh, cannot see it in the chart. Very good. So chaos is common. Regular regularity, regular geometries are exceptional. Uh, very well. Uh, let us uh, understand how quantize the chaos. This is done with a random matrix theory, um, which we have discussed in the lecture. It's been put forward by Wigner and Dyson uh, in a very uh, interesting uh, development. That was in the 50s of uh, 20th century. And these guys have been employed by uh, American government to work on nuclear physics because it was a kind of very uh, applicable topic by that time. Now, fortunately, it's not uh, that applicable, that interesting anymore. Uh, so they've been studying nuclei and nuclei and nuclei, very many nuclear spectrum. They got extremely bored of that. And they decided to make a practical joke. They just assume, well, I don't know, I want to know anything about uh, nuclei. I can assume that nucleus uh, is a random system given by a uh, Hamiltonian, which is random matrix. And with this joke, they could eventually uh, predict many features of actual nuclear spectra. So what is uh, important in um, uh, Wigner-Dyson uh, statistics and Wigner-Dyson distribution is that levels in 
a random matrix eigenvalues of random matrix they repel each other they avoid each other and owing to this repulsion they become ordered stronger repulsion more order this is in contrast with the uh, levels in separable geometries like we have considered here levels are organized in series uh, uh, levels of different series do not talk to each other so they come eventually pretty random they can be very close to each other separated by large distances surprisingly if one just you know um, put some levels in random don't care uh, without caring about correlations between the levels uh, the picture let me quickly draw these levels the picture will be also qualitatively the same as for regular uh, geometry uh, right which is distinct from what I put in the middle in discrete from uh, a Wigner Dyson distribution. Uh, right, I am a little bit out of time, sir. I guess uh, I put some simple but technical details to show how to deal with uh, random matrices the level repulsion can be already seen for two by two matrices and one can always uh, also notice for this simple example that there are different ensembles of matrices this matrices matrix is hemisphere this is thematic and the level repulsion is different for these two situations I don't want to spend much time, much of your time on this. I personally would gladly spend more. Um, uh, let me just uh, kind of refer to, to the book or lecture concept. Uh, Wigner Dyson distribution uh, is based on other repulsion. The repulsion is different for different ensembles. And uh, yeah, I also talked, I uh, guess, um, last time about this electrostatic uh, analogy. Let me talk about the most important uh, thing about Wigner um, uh, Dyson statistics spectral rigidity. Let me recall this uh, point again. Sure, if we have a certain number of levels in energy strip, uh, uh, random levels in an energy uh, strip, we might wonder what is the variance of this number. If the levels are random are not correlated between each other, variance, as we know, is proportional to number of levels, number of index events um, many distributions uh, are um, have such property uh, for Wigner Dyson distribution the variance uh, depends uh, very little on the logarithmic and on the number of, le uh, of levels so it is uh, about one to illustrate the difference between these two situations let me get some practical nowadays uh, it is uh, much more than practical example uh, let me talk about uh, population in uh, Delft, which is uh, 10 to the 5. Uh, right. Let us estimate the variation of number of inhabitants in Delft at any uh, given moment of time. 
under normal circumstances, they come, they go, there is uh, freedom of uh, moving. Right, so the square root of this would give us uh, something like, uh, uh, let us see, 300. And it kind of feels, uh, feel, feel, feels normal. So perhaps it's a good variation. If there were spectral rigidity, the fluctuation of this number would be fine. Right. So, how to accomplish this? Uh, yeah, it would be a situation of complete lockdown, like we don't have, fortunately, in this country, but well, some countries do impose it. It's, it, it's a curfew, uh, it's a police which patrols the streets, uh, making sure that nobody leaves home, uh, houses. This is a very distinct uh, way of life, which eventually would uh, realize spectral rigidity uh, for population. Good. I've said everything which I wanted to say. Uh, sorry for uh, a little bit of delay. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. So please uh, don't hesitate if you have lecture, if you have questions about the lecture, this lecture, any other lecture of the course, please write to me. I will answer, perhaps not immediately, but I will answer. I am interested in your questions, especially now when uh, kind of communications between us are rather difficult. So, Thank you for your attention. Um, let me say goodbye to you till next week.